What's up guys? Hey, it's Clint Coons here. And in this video, we're going to talk about who can be the manager of a limited liability company. All right, let's get started. All right. So with limited liability companies, if you weren't aware of this, there are two forms you can create. One is referred to as a manager managed limited liability company. And the other one is a member managed LLC. So whichever form you choose to create, there's going to be a manager involved in the running of that limited liability company's day-to-day -day business operations. But the question always becomes, who's going to be my manager? Should it be me? Should it be a business entity? Well, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to delve in to determining which might be the best case scenario for you and the type of business that you're running. Okay, let's move over here and talk about it. All right, so with the limited liability company, uh, when you set one of these LLCs up here, this is my LLC, who can be the manager? Well, obviously, if it's my LLC, we can have an individual here as a manager. And a lot of people do it this way. If they're setting up their LLC and they make it manager uh, managed, they will name themselves as a manager. And I get it. When you list yourself as a manager of an LLC, what you're doing is you're, you're making it very simple to operate that entity from the standpoint was when you're working with third parties and they want to ask, well, who's in control of this LLC and they see your name on it. Well, they know right away that this is your LLC and you have control. So it's really no difference here. If it was manager managed or member managed, if it was a member managed LLC, your name would be listed down here. So you have what we call a parent authority with that type of structure. Now, the drawback to using an individual, of course, as a manager of a limited liability company is that if any claims are brought against the LLC, even though the managers are technically supposed to be protected, indemnified under statute, it doesn't mean they're not going to sue the manager. I mean, attorneys will sue anyone that's connected with the business because they want to squeeze anybody they can just to pay out their policy limits. So when you serve as a manager, as an individual, you'll always run that risk that if the LLC is being sued, well, you can get drug into that as an individual. The other thing you want to consider in using an individual or why you may not do that is that when you're using an individual as the manager of a limited liability company, there's no anonymity there or people know that it's you. So uh, the positive is that it's easy to do business. The negative is that your information's blasted out there. So if somebody was looking up uh, this LLC, they find your name, they can find your personal address and, and that can be a problem. I mean, do you want people to know where you live? Let's say this LLC here holds rental real estate and you have a disgruntled tenant. Now that disgruntled tenant knows if they're upset with you and they want to create chaos in your life, well, they know you're knowing where your house is. That's one step to creating chaos in your personal life. I knew this when I was growing up. My, my father's tenants would do this to my mother when he would go out of town because he was a very hands-on manager. He's always down there at the apartment building on a daily basis. When he didn't show up for a while, that's when the phone calls would start at 12 o'clock at night, two o'clock in the morning, harassing phone calls just to scare my mother. So keeping your, the hands-off approach could be more beneficial, but that is don't serve as a manager in your own name. So what are some other options we have? Well, if it's not going to be an individual, another option you have as far as management is concerned is possibly set up an entity. All right. So an entity can serve as a manager of a limited liability company. So that could be a corporation. It could be another LLC that would be serving as the manager here. So in this case, when you're using a entity as a manager, either as a manager managed LLC or a member managed LLC, uh, the benefit is, is that you get some anonymity depending on where it's set up. And so people see the entity and they say the entity is the one in control and not an individual. Now you may be working for that entity. So if this was an entity here, uh, an LLC, for instance, and I was the manager of this LLC, that doesn't equate to the fact people would know that this red box over here is mine. They would just think that I work for a company that manages this limited liability company on this side. So the benefit of using an entity, it's going to give you some liability protection. If somebody sues this LLC, then they name this one. It's not putting your name in the crosshairs. Um, by using the entity LLC, it does complicate sometimes transacting business. Let's say you're applying for a loan 
and someone's looking at the LLC and they see you listed down here possibly as a member and the entity as a manager and then you have to sign on, on that loan on behalf of this LLC it can get a little complicated here because the underwriter is not only going to look at this LLC, they're going to look at this LLC and look down to you. And so that can drag out the process. If you're looking for a quick close and you're using traditional financing, this can sometimes get, make it uh, a little complicated for that underwriter to figure out who the parties are or who involved in this overall process. But you have to balance that whether or not you want that additional protection of using that uh, entity as a manager from that liability shield. For example, if I had some LLC set up here and I'm, I'm gonna manage multiple LLCs, then I think it makes some financial sense to set up a management LLC uh, up here that manages all of these because then you can upstream money off of here into this LLC which would presumably be taxed either an S Corp or a C Corp to get some tax deductions where ordinarily you wouldn't be able to pull them if you just did not have this structure sitting up top. So that's when I would look at using a management entity in my overall planning if I'm looking to pull up money for tax purposes. The second reason in which I would use the business entity approach is if I didn't want my tenants to know that I'm associated with these LLCs down here. Because let's assume that you're using one of the strategies that I'm very fond of, an anonymity strategy where you have all your LLCs going to the Wyoming company, but you want to personally manage your structure. So you've got these homes uh, set up inside of here and you want to be a hands-on, you're not using a third-party property manager. The question is, do you want to manage these properties on your own, right, and, and deal with it that way with the tenants, or do you want to set up a management LLC up here to manage them? So, that, so that's when you might make this a more managed structure um, for that aspect to keep it away from you. But the one entity you should not use when it comes to setting up a limited liability company, in my opinion, is to use a trust. Do not use trust as the managers of your business entities. And the main reason why is that it seems to really create confusion for third parties when they see that a trust is the manager because then they're going to really want to delve into that trust and read all the provisions to see whether or not you as a trustee of your trust has the authority to take the actions in which you're engaging in on behalf of that LLC. All right, so that's what we wanted to look at when we're determining who should be the manager of your limited liability company. It's either you, it's a business entity, but most definitely it's never going to be a trust. Hey, if you like this video, smash the like button. If you're not yet a subscriber, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Take care.